fifth day of searching fails to locate a missing Phelps County boy. We have the latest. Kaiser's student was practicing at football camp and is now recovering from a heat-related illness. I'm Stephanie Hirata with that story coming up. And work on the Lafayette Street interchange enters a phase with significant disruption to the flow of Jefferson, Tr Jefferson City traffic. We'll tell you what to expect beginning tomorrow. And the shade is where to be on a hot day like today for the Backyard Barbecue. KRCG 13 Live at 6 starts right now. Live from across mid-Missouri, this is KRCG 13 Live at 6. Good evening. It has been five days since a Phelps County boy disappeared from his home. Crews today continued their search for Jonathan Shea. KRCG 13's Elizabeth Hoffman joins us in the studio with the latest. Carmen and Megan, volunteers and sheriff's deputies tell me they are not giving up hope on finding Jonathan Shea alive. 13-year-old Jonathan and his 11-year-old cousin Xavier Baylor walked off on what family members say was boys being adventurous. That was around 7.30 Thursday night. Xavier was found near the Dry Fork Creek by the Highway Patrol on Friday afternoon, but he said he hadn't seen Jonathan in several hours. The Highway Patrol, sheriff's deputies, canine units, and at least 100 volunteers have since been searching the ground, water, and air in hopes of finding Jonathan. Jonathan is a boy living with autism. He was last seen wearing a gray shirt, dark blue shorts, and tennis shoes. Family members tell me they think he is hiding and possibly scared, especially without his medication. We talked with Jonathan's mother today, and she, like any mother, is extremely concerned. It's, it's hopeless and helpless. I mean, it's going on five days. I, I just want him to be safe, but I mean, he's 13 years old. He's never been out on his own. I talked with Phelps County Sheriff Detective George Arnold this afternoon, and he tells me as long as there are possible sightings of Jonathan, they have to remain hopeful that he is still alive. All right, thanks, Liz. In other news tonight, a Hallsville toddler is still in the hospital after being left in a hot car Sunday afternoon. KRCG 13's Courtney Joden joins us live from Boone County with the latest developments on this story. Courtney? Kermit and Megan, there are still a lot of questions surrounding this incident involving this toddler, but what we do know is that this two-year-old little boy was allegedly left in a hot car Sunday afternoon for two hours after a family outing. Now, the Boone County Fire Protection District responded to the 1300 block of North Robinson Drive around 415 Sunday afternoon after the boy's parents called 911. When firefighters arrived, the boy was unresponsive and being cooled by his parents in their home. The two year old was immediately taken to Women's and Children's Hospital in serious condition. Boone County Fire Protection District Battalion Chief Gail Bloomingcamp says the boy is still in the hospital, but his condition is unknown. Blooming Camp says the temperatures rise very quickly on hot days in locked parked cars, and in a matter of minutes, temperatures can reach 150 degrees or more. Depending on how long he was in there, whether it was shaded, whether it wasn't shaded, um, doesn't really matter um, because he was stuck in that vehicle for quite some time, and so temperatures were very hot. Um, people can, can tolerate that for a short period of time, but um, like I said earlier, kids are very resilient, but when they crash, they crash pretty hard, and so um, unfortunately, he was, he was in there too long. The family of the two-year-old little boy did not want to speak with us on camera. The Boone County, the Boone County, the Boone County, excuse me, Sheriff's Department is investigating this incident and can continue to stay with KRCG as we gather in more information as it becomes available to us. In Boone County, Courtney Joden, KRCG 13. Thank you, Courtney. School officials tell us a school of the Osage football player is being treated for a heat-related illness. KRCG 13 Stephanie Harada has that story. On Monday, the student had to be taken to the hospital after informing coaches he was hot and he wasn't showing significant improvement after their efforts to try and cool him off. School of the Osage Assistant Superintendent Tony Berry says, I feel like our coaches did everything correct and I'm very proud of our staff. He explains that football practice was canceled yesterday and today, not because of the heat, but because the coaches wanted to be with the student under medical care. In light of the student's condition, we're reminded by health officials of how dangerous the 
the heat can be. Folks need to take the weather that we're having right now seriously. The temperatures are in the high 90s, the heat index is high, and it puts everyone at risk for heat illness, particularly the very young, the very old, and those who are vigorously active outside. Hospitals in Jefferson City and Columbia have seen patients for heat-related illnesses since the heat wave started this week. Hospital officials continue to advise everyone to take the heat seriously and take necessary precautions. Reporting in Jefferson City, Stephanie Hirata, KRCG 13. Dr. Wilmore recommends staying hydrated and cool when we're experiencing high temperatures. And now, your KRCG 13 Storm Vision First Weather. Well, the backyard barbecue tonight in Ashland with the Spears family and Mandy and Chris with your Jefferson City High V throwing on the burgers now. Everything so far smelling pretty good. It has been a very hot day. Lots of sunshine here through the afternoon. Now we're finding a lot more sunshine after a few clouds have rolled through earlier today. We did have a dry conditions here at mid-Missouri, but you do see some of those rain showers just slide across southern parts of the state. Right now, still very warm. We're in the 90s, 94 degrees. Jefferson City, Columbia at 93. The lake at 90 degrees, still in the 80s for Rolla, but when you factor in that humidity, it feels like 101 to 105 degrees all across the Missouri, and we do have a heat advisory that is in effect tonight until 8 p.m. Beyond 8 p.m., we are still going to find a warm evening. The muggy conditions will continue, but we will start to find less humid conditions over the next couple days. That's some good news, but the heat is going to stick around in your forecast. We'll talk about how warm it looks as we get into the weekend, and if there's any relief coming up in a few more minutes. Back to you. All right, thanks, Zach. The Cole County Commission this morning approved spending up to $48,700 to hire an engineering firm to deal with Lower Bottom Road. The road collapsed during last week's rains, rendering it impassable. County Public Works Director Larry Benz believes the collapse started with a slide on the banks of the adjacent creek, which worked its way back to the road. I brought a contract to be able to hire uh, Gradell Engineering to be able to do the geotechnical work, do some drilling to see what we've got. It's set up as a um, not to exceed contract, so if we get through the drilling and it appears to be something that we can handle in-house uh, relatively easily, uh, we'll stop their contract at that point. Benz is hoping a federal disaster declaration will be made to allow the county to recover as much as 75% of its repair expenses. He says his office has already talked to officials in the Blair Oaks School District about the potential disruption to school bus routes once the school year starts. In a project marked by repeated traffic flow interruptions, MoDOT is about to launch a major one at the new Lafayette Street interchange on Highway 5063. After rush hour Wednesday morning, crews will close the outside westbound lane of the highway between Clark and Monroe for a period of eight weeks. They also will close the westbound on-ramp at Clark Street and the block of Lafayette that runs beneath the highway. Lafayette will remain closed for the next year, meaning students at Lincoln University and Jefferson City High School will not be able to use it as an access point. We've seen a lot of close it, open it, close it, open it with this so far. Is this the biggest and potentially most interruptive example of that? In my opinion, this will be the, the most interruptive primarily for the morning commute. Now, to alleviate some of the congestion, MoDOT Thursday will open the new westbound off-ramp at Lafayette. Now, since Lafayette will be closed to the left, traffic will have a free right turn at the bottom of the ramp. That is, until the new westbound on-ramp there is finished, hopefully within the next eight weeks. The Cole County Commission today recognized two deputies who thwarted an armed robbery in late May. Sheriff Greg White awarded citations to John Strobel and Sean Gerstner for subduing an armed suspect during the robbery of the downtown Subway restaurant May 28th. Working with a Jefferson City police officer, the two entered the building through a rear door and got the drop on the would-be thief. The suspect was quickly disarmed and taken to the floor where he was handcuffed, searched, and transported. Your swift and effective actions terminated the event, protected life and property, and took a convicted felon who was committing an armed felony into custody. And the prosecutor has charged David Humes with first-degree robbery, two counts of armed criminal action, felonious restraint, unlawful possession of a firearm. He is in the Cole County Jail on $200,000 bond.
Well, despite the hot weather, the grilling goes on. Zach Paul is live from tonight's backyard barbecue with our steamy forecast. That's next on KRCG 13 Live at 6. Your KRCG 13 Storm Vision Forecast with Zach Paul. Welcome back. We are in Ashland tonight for the Backyard Barbecue. Another wonderful setting here. Luckily, we have uh, some shady conditions here on the, the back side of the house. And Janice Spears is our winner tonight. Congratulations. Yay. Thanks so much for having us. We've been able to sample some of the food so far. How is it? It was excellent. We had the jalapeno peppers, and boy, they were good. Okay. Well, the good stuff is still coming. We've got all the beef on the grill. That'll be ready to go here before you know. But you've got a lot of people here. You've got your mother sitting here. Can you uh, quickly run through and sort of introduce us to everybody? Yeah. Yeah, we've got my son over here, his name's Ben, and we've got our good friend Marsha Root and her friend Bill Lacey. My brother's back over there, his name's John, and then there's my mother, Ruth Crane. You and can then, wave, there you go, you go out, there you go. And then Avery's <laughs> over there playing in the water. You can't see her right now, but Avery's two, and she's over having a good time. Yeah, she's staying cool with the water, and that's some good thing, because it's been yeah, a hot day today. It's hot today. How hot was it? You know, it was 94 degrees is the high today, and the low was 78. Yeah, that's a warm start to it the was, day. It was very warm. And look, Looks, looks like the record in 1954 was 113 degrees. I'm glad it wasn't that warm today. Me too. <laughs> I bet you Chris, though, slaving away on the grill. It's probably yeah. pretty warm over there. But we'll sample some of those burgers uh, here coming up in a little bit. But thanks again for having us out here. It's uh, a wonderful afternoon. It has been on the warm side, as you heard, up to 94 degrees here today. And the heat, it's going to stick around for a little bit longer. We do have heat advisories in effect until 8 o'clock tonight all across the mid-Missouri area. And temperatures, again, have been on the warm side. We did have a little bit of cloud cover earlier today. That helped to keep the temperatures down briefly. But now we're here through that late part of the afternoon and early evening. Temperatures have really rebounded back there into the 90s. Sunshine all across the area and 90 degrees right now in Fulton, Boonville, Versailles, both at 95 degrees. The heat index, once again, that's the story again today is the humidity is really causing a lot of uh, dangerous heat across mid Missouri. Looking for those low triple digits. 100 is what it feels like right now in Dixon. It feels like 104 currently in Fulton. Here is a live look over Jefferson City. Some scattered clouds off in the back ground on our Scruggs Lumber camera. Otherwise, it is just a hot afternoon. Currently 94 degrees. It feels like 101 degrees right now in Jefferson City, despite having northwest winds right now at 10 miles per hour. Across the region, the showers that were across southwest Missouri, those are quickly racing down to the southeast, southern Tennessee, picking up some of those rain showers now. That was along a weak cold front that's sliding through. For us, we're going to find actually more of a warm front, so we are going to continue to find the warm conditions sticking around. Maybe a few scattered clouds tonight. And by Wednesday afternoon, evening, we might even find a few drops of some rain. I don't think we'll find a lot of rain, and most of us will stay dry. But as that warm front lifts through Wednesday night into your Thursday morning, we will find that chance for some showers. But again, most of us will stay on the dry side. The heat, though, sticking around as that warm front moves through. And while we had a really warm start tomorrow, it'll be a little better tomorrow morning. Still above the average. Those averages still in the upper 60s. We're looking for the mid-70s tomorrow morning. Hot for the afternoon, looking for the upper 80s to right around 90 degrees. And the humidity, a lot better tomorrow. I still think we'll have those heat indices in the low to mid-90s. But with those temperatures, they're going to make things feel a little bit better. Here's that seven-day forecast. The heat continues again, the low 90s as we go Thursday into Friday. The humidity, I think, will start to return Friday and into the weekend. I think those heat indices for the weekend will start climbing close to 100 degrees as those temperatures start climbing back into the mid-90s on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Sunday, and we'll find maybe a couple hit and miss showers there early next week. Again, we are here at the Backyard Barbecue. Joining me now, Rachel Gassler with the Missouri Beef Council. And we've been doing these backyard barbecues and with you guys. And the thing that you guys have been trying to do is educate folks mm -hmm. on beef. So what is what, what can we learn tonight? Well, in a three-ounce serving of beef, you get... 22% of your daily value of B6, vi of vitamin B6. And so that helps improve your brain function. And uh, it's you get a health or a healthy treat as well as a uh, tasty one. So B6, very important, whether mm -hmm. it's I mean, just a very good thing you get. And we said a three ounce serving of beef, right? Mm -hmm. Which is probably a standard hamburger. It is, it's about this size. One that we're gonna have tonight, guys. It's looking pretty good. Megan Kermit, back to you guys. All right, thanks. Gladly take leftovers. Uh -huh. Thanks, Zach. The commissioners of one Missouri County are showing their feelings on a recent Supreme Court decision. We are live from Dent County next on KRCG 13, live at 6. 
Commissioners in Dent County face growing pressure not to lower their courthouse American flag to half staff. Commissioners had voted to do it to pr protest the recent Supreme Court ruling on same-sex marriage. Garrett Burquist joins us live from Salem to explain what led to the reversal. Megan and Kermit, the Dent County Commission voted on Monday to lower the, the American flag at the uh, Dent County Courthouse to half staff on the 26th of every month. That's the date of the Supreme Court ruling that legalized same-sex marriage in the United States. But residents of Dent County balked almost immediately. One man actually started a petition calling on the commissioners to rescind their vote. Almost everyone that I've talked to here in Salem said that they think the flag should have been left alone. Alone. One woman even said that as far as she was concerned, three people made the, made the decision on the behalf of the entire community, but the community did not agree with that decision. And Presiding Commissioner Daryl Skiles said that tomorrow the county commission is expected to vote on whether or not to rescind that original vote due in large part to protests from veterans groups. Live in Salem, Missouri, Garrett Bergquist, KRCG 13. All right, thanks, Garrett. Well, two more Tiger football stars earn preseason honors. And baseball's top stars get set for tonight's Midsummer Classic. Tony is in next with sports. If the weather cooperates, and it looks like it will at this point, baseball's all-star game will begin in about 40 minutes in Cincinnati. The 86th edition of the Midsummer Classic will feature plenty of show-me-state flavor. There are six Cardinals and seven Royals who were selected as all-star. Royals manager Ned Yost also there. He will be the skipper of the American League for the first time. To have that many guys uh, uh, from your organization um, here enjoying this event. Again, this event is um, extremely special to me and to be able to take uh, a lot of my guys and, and be able to enjoy it with them, watch them enjoy it is going to be special. The Oost will have three Royals in the starting lineup for tonight's All-Star Game. Lorenzo Kane, he'll bat fifth, playing in right field. Catcher Salvador Perez hitting seventh for the American League. Shortstop Alcides Escobar will bat ninth. There he is, Houston Astros lefty Dallas Keuchel will get the start on the mound. Here's how the National League will line up. There's one Cardinal in the lineup and last night's home run derby champion Todd Frazier of the Cincinnati Reds. He bats second. The only Redbird to start, shortstop Johnny Peralta. He'll bat seventh. Dodger pitcher Zach Greinke, the former Royal, will get the start on the mound for the National League. A pair of Missouri Tigers landed on the Butkus Award watch list. That is given to the top linebacker in college football. Senior Contrell Brothers and junior Michael Shear both made the cut. Missouri is one of 13 schools national to have multiple players on the Butkus watch list. Race leader Christopher Froome made a big move in today's 10th stage of the Tour de France, the first big mountain stage of the race. Froome began the day with a 12-second advantage over TJ Van Garden. That lead is now 2 minutes and 52 seconds after Froome rolled to victory in today's stage. The race will continue through the Pyrenees Mountains tomorrow and Thursday. And join us tonight at 10 for our weekly good sports report. We'll take you out to the ballpark. The Miracle Baseball League, which wrapped up its eighth season at Bender Park last Friday. The league gives kids with disabilities a chance to play the game. We'll show you some of the sights and sounds of this memorable league that is coming up tonight at 10 o'clock. It is always fun to go out there and watch those kids play the game and just have a wonderful time yeah. out there. So we'll show you that this evening. Lots of smiles. Mm -hmm. And Zach will have the evening planner next. Welcome back to the Backyard Barbecue in Ashland tonight with the Spears family. It's been a great night. Weather cooperating. We've got the shade going on for us right now, but we are going to find muggy conditions continuing as we head into your overnight hours. Just a few scattered clouds. Temperatures will start off in the low to mid 70s early on your Wednesday morning. The heat will continue as we go through the afternoon, looking for around 89 degrees tomorrow, maybe a spot shower or two by the afternoon evening. Otherwise, we start to find those temperatures creeping back up by the end of the week, looking for low to mid 90s for the weekend, hot and humid. So we've sampled all the food Janice, how is it? It is excellent food. Spears excellent. France family, yeah. Yay! We got another seal of approval, guys. Back to you. All right. Looks good. Mm -hmm. That is our report. We thank you for joining us. We hope to hear, see you and hear you back here tonight at 10. See you then.